Hello everyone, welcome back to the Keep Productive YouTube channel. It is Francesco here, and in today's video, we'll be taking a look at the top 12 to-do list applications for 2020. This will be an updated list of the best to-do list applications on the market right now. Now, now as you can imagine, there are so many to-do list applications and it's really hard to pick. We've recently developed a course that might be helpful. It should be coming soon. We'll put it in the link in the description. So if you're finding it difficult to find one, this will be more of a list that will outline the best ones and give you a all-rounder perspective. So we'll be covering in this video the core features, the pricing, and who this is most recommended for. So without further ado guys, let's jump into today's video. So let's start the list off with Todoist. Now Todoist is probably one of the most known to-do list applications on the market. It provides you with a really all-round experience, allowing you to create projects, manage your tasks from an inbox all the way to getting them done, using intelligent input so you can add your tasks using short commands, and also a really reliable native application on all of your devices. Now, Todoist is probably the application of choice for many all-rounders, those who aren't looking for a specialist application necessarily, but a good pack amount of features. Now, it is priced at $36 on an annual subscription that recurs every single year. And for many people, including myself, it is a really reliable application. So our second on the list is TickTick. Again, TickTick is very similar to Todoist in allowing you to have all-round abilities managing your projects and your lists, but it does include features like Kanban boards on desktop. It also includes Android-specific features like habit tracking and also plenty of themes to keep you and your friends updated if you're sharing a list. Now, TickTick is a little bit cheaper than Todoist, priced at $27.99 per year. And again, it does have a lot of the Todoist functionality and is a favorite for many people upgrading from Wunderlist. Number three on our list is Microsoft To Do. Now this is a Microsoft application and is really the go-to upgrade for Wunderlist users, mainly because they have an importer and also it does mimic the majority of features that Wunderlist has. Now inside of Microsoft To Do, you have very basic abilities. You won't get the features that are necessarily inside of Todoist or TickTick. However, you'll get a good basic level of ability to manage your tasks inside of lists, share them with others, and be able to capture them in an inbox. However, you'll be missing out on some of the more advanced abilities like filters and labels that TickTick and Todoist have. But the great thing about to Microsoft To Do is that it's free, so you can download the application. As long as you've got a Microsoft account, you can get started. Next up is another big player in the space, it's Things 3. Now this is developed by a company called Cultured Code, and they've developed this application for many years now, and this is actually the third big official iteration. It is priced at slightly more, however, it is a one-off fee. If you download it on Mac, you can get a 14-day free trial, but it is $49.99 to buy it outright. And if you wanted it on your iPhone, or your iPad on iOS devices, they have two different pricing. On iPhone, it's $9.99, and on iPads, it's $19.99. But do remember that once you've paid for it, you do have that single user license, which you can use across the board. Now, jumping onto Things 3's features, a lot of people like the features because they're very simplistic. You can manage your tasks in today, this evening, and even see all of your scheduled events and tasks for the coming weeks ahead, and also be able to manage your tasks inside of projects and areas, which is something that some other applications like Todoist and TickTick don't actually have. So this is definitely a go-to for those looking for a sort of interim between a good Toulouse application like Todoist and a more advanced GTD-like application like OmniFocus, which we'll come to later. 
Okay, so number five, and that is Remember the Milk. Now, Remember the Milk is a fairly old application in the space. It's been around for a fair while, and it was promoted by Apple in its very early days. Now, RTM, or Remember the Milk, has a really nice design and is available on pretty much all devices. Now, there is a free experience. However, I remember it being very limited, but the annual plan for premium is $39 per year. Now, the application it does remind users of a GTD-like experience, but it does allow you to do a lot of different things, including add tags, setting due dates, and start dates as well, which many people like to have inside of their to-do list application. So a lot of people are looking at this application, even though it is a veteran in the productivity space. Now, talking number six, another veteran, it's OmniFocus. Now, OmniFocus 3 is one of the most popular to-do list applications for those looking to really hone in on their task management. This is more of a GTD-esque application that follows much stricter abilities and I guess a little bit of learning and training as well. Now, it is available on iOS only, so you're only gonna be able to get this on Mac and iOS devices like iPad and iPhone. Now, the great thing is that it has a license that can cover all of them. It's $99 per year, which is a little bit steep, but again, you're paying for a really quality application. And the actual developers behind it, the Omni Group, are developing more than just one application. So you're supporting that network at the same time. And a lot of people are, once they join the OmniFocus sort of clan, they do stick there for a fairly long time. And that's mainly because the features are very uh, good to learn. And once you learn them, uh, you can really get and go far with them. Now, moving on to number seven, that's Nirvana HQ. And in my opinion, this is probably one of the most neglected GTD applications out there. It is a really GTD focused application with plenty of training. If you're looking to use the application, I think you do really have to be sort of trained in GTD or at least have read the book because you'll have a whole host of different projects like Next Actions and also uh, weekly reviews to go through. But in my opinion, this is one of the most reliable, uh, I guess, feature-driven application that promotes GTD. And it is really one of those sort of hidden gems. Now, Nirvana HQ is $29 per year, again, which is a lot cheaper. So if you're looking at like a sort of OmniFocus-like application that has uh, a few GTD uh, sort of following abilities, then you're actually gonna really enjoy this one and I guess save a little bit of money. Although again, it's uh, probably missing out slightly on OmniFocus's uh, design. OmniFocus's design is very well known, especially for winning awards with Apple. So just be aware of that, but I do think it's a very much a hidden gem of the productivity or to-do list application space. Now, moving on to number eight, we have TaskAid. Now, TaskAid is a free application and you are actually allowed free collaborators on it. Um, it's more of a team application these days. They're pushing it towards it, but it does allow you to manage your tasks and do a whole host of other things as well. It's sort of taking on the application notion in a sense, allowing you to create boards and even manage some of your other projects. However, TaskAid does provide a nice to-do list that you can share with other people, which is quite nice. And they don't even have to have a TaskAid account, which is great because they can guest edit um, all of the lists you send them. So for example, if you are looking to send someone, um, if you're someone in college or university, or even someone who works in a small team, looking to constantly share like a list of tasks or timeline that you're gonna be working on in the next couple of days, then TaskAid is a good application for that. They do have a premium, which is $7 per month, which does give you access to more collaborators and also um, does give you access to more storage, I believe, as well as features. But I'll include all of the details on pricing below. Now, number nine is Google Tasks. This is very similar to Microsoft To Do, but has a little less uh, abilities. You can only get this one currently on iOS 
Android. And you may have seen it in Gmail on that right hand side panel where you can open it up and see your tasks. Now, if you're a Google freak and you use Google Keep for taking notes um, and also Google Docs and all that, this might be a nice application for you. However, they don't develop that much on it. It is a free application. And for example, if you're in Gmail and you commonly like to save emails as tasks, you can drag any emails into your Google Tasks using that browser extension, sort of like browser extension, and uh, it will actually allow you to open up the emails as soon as you uh, start that task, which is quite nice. So again, if you're a Google fan, boy or girl, then you can enjoy that one for sure. Number 10, guys, is To Do, and that's spelt with the number two and D-O. This is an application that's been around for a while. I believe it's a single developer who's working on this application, but it is sort of a balance between OmniFocus and Things 3. It does provide you with really nice GTD like abilities, allowing you to plan your projects in a very structured fashion. They do have these things called smart lists, which help you to create these really advanced filters to set things up. And the great thing is they've got a single user plan across all of your devices. You can get it for $59 one off, which I guess is a good price, especially if you're looking to save money and uh, just get one license as you go. Number 11 is another application, AnyDo. They do have a free experience. It's very similar to Microsoft To Do, but also Google Tasks, but goes a little bit further in allowing you to create lists. And what I quite like about this application is the inclusion of a calendar, allowing you to see your calendar events, allowing you to connect up with Google Calendar, but also allowing you to organize and manage your tasks. And they do have a few abilities in the, I guess, AI or machine learning, which they're slowly releasing, which will allow you to action tasks and get a computer to start doing some of those tasks. But again, in very early days and experimental, they do have a premium plan, which is priced at $5.99 per month. But a lot of people are happy to pay that because the reliability and apparently the retention on this application is a lot higher than uh, other of other applications in the to-do list application space. But again, that's $72 per year. So that's a little bit steeper than some of the applications like Todoist, actually doubling Todoist's price. But again, uh, if you find the application reliable, then it's totally up to you. And I think the user interfaces are some of the best in the space, especially from a concept perspective. They always look like a concept to me because they're so uh, well designed. So that's number 11. And the final one is actually one that is a little bit of a wild card, but again is Habitica. If you're looking to gamify your productivity uh, in a task management sense, you can use something called Habitica, which was previously known as Habit. RPG. It's basically a game allowing you to create a character and then once you start completing tasks you can and habits you can actually monitor your productivity gaining XP and growing your character and taking them through the levels. So that's a free application. There are some subscription which I believe were five dollars a month but again that's to get extra gold and also gems and to access a few more features. So guys, those were the 12 that I'd recommend. Again, take your time. We've just released a course that will help you to pick your perfect to-do list application. It's more of a timeless guide, so it does mention a few of these. However, at the same time, it tries teaching you to really think about how you're approaching your to-do list application's decisions. So please do check it out in the link in the description. I also will be planning a free applications feature where we'll go over the best to-do list applications. So please do subscribe if you're brand new, like this video if you enjoyed it, and share below maybe which one you are using or which one you picked from this video because it'd be great to hear and also it gives other people the opinions and uh, sort of insights that they might need to know. So guys, a big thank you and I'll talk to you guys very, very soon. Cheers everyone, bye.